and welcome back to another episode of TED Talk Stamps. Today I'm going to be talking to Lawrence Fisher, who has realized a decades-long dream of winning a large gold medal at a philatelic exhibition that happened just recently at IBRA, the Internationale Briefmarkenausstellung in Essen, Germany. I spoke with Lawrence over a video chat, and he explained how it all came about and gives some tips for uh, potential exhibitors on how to do it. So, let's listen to Lawrence. All right. They're going to put me in the movies. <laughs> and don't give up your day job. <laughs> <laughs> I already did. <laughs> yeah, I'm no, living the life of Riley now. Hey, how uh, are you doing, Lawrence? I'm quite well, thank you. How are you keeping? All right. So, what's that background you got? Uh, this is actually an, an interesting item from 1592, sorry, uh, 1692 sent from Acre to Livorno. Hmm. And um, it was sent from a merchant to a merchant. And one of the reasons I have it in my exhibit uh, is because of the letters DLC, uh, sorry, Q, QDC, or which basically means God will um, uh, guide you. Mm -hmm. uh, Q de Condues. And uh, with a lot of items uh, in, in those uh, in the 17th century, for example, uh, if you want to send uh, items by maritime mail, it was not there was no actual postal fees. So person someone has to pay for the mail. And the way that they did that was they sent it via a certain captain. And if the if the you sent something with the name of a captain of a ship and the letters QDC. It basically meant that the item was paid for. And when it got to the other side, it was just sent in the regular mail or whatever. It's not the only, shall we say, talismanic uh, mention. There's also something called DLC, which I tried, which is uh, said earlier, which basically means um, uh, go with God. Go with God. Mm -hmm. And I actually, in my exhibit, I use both examples because they both have different meanings. Uh, so that's a connection to uh, my exhibit. Okay. And well, speaking of which, congratulations on your large gold. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, man. There's my bed. Oh, there it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and what does that mean, large gold? There's a small gold also? Okay. Let me explain. Um, Every every country has their own rules. America, North America has uh, its rules, and that's called uh, a national exhibition. Um, you know, you can have a local exhibition, which can be your the local town, it can be your um, county, it can be your state, or whatever. And then you have the national exhibition, which can be the whole of North, South, uh, North America or, or America. If you take um, the... Um, the name of the exhibit, which is, always makes me laugh, the, the gas. Yeah. <laughs> They've got gas. Okay. Uh, that basically can look at as a national exhibition because it encompasses all of America. It's not to localize to one country. Now, the medals um, are divided between the amount of points that you got. Now, on an international level, when, you, when, you've, when you've got a certain amount of points at the national level, you can go internationally, and they have to play by the rules of the international community and then the medal points go in stages of five uh, for example if you get 80 80 percent to 84 points it get a vermeil medal 85 to 89 it's a, a large vermeil 90 to 94 it's a gold medal and 95 and above it's a large gold medal mm -hmm. and i got for the first time in life a large gold all right and i am happy <laughs> And this was for 20 years. <laughs> Ibra yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, philatelic exhibition in Germany this past week. Okay, well, this is your first large gold. And after how many years? When did you start? 20, year, 20 years. Uh, it's 20 years of trying at the international level, but I've been exhibiting since 1990. Uh -huh. And uh, it's very, very difficult. Um, very, very difficult. Um, I spoke to you earlier about uh, about national and local and whatever. 
Um, the idea is, if you look at it as a foot, as a, um, uh, shall we say, a football player or an American football player, and you play American football in your local town and you become the best at the local town and it's good, your local city, and you're the best there. Then you go to play at college and all of a sudden you have to play within the bigger boys mm -hmm. and you play amongst the bigger boys and then you go professional and you play the best in, uh, in North America and you become like that. Then when you want to go internationally, the laws already on the, all of a sudden change on you and you have to abide by those kind of laws. Now, before you can get... Before you can go international, you have to reach some kind of level at a at a local at a national level. So it took a long time. When, as I said, in 1990 it was the first time I exhibited. I, I almost got a certificate of participation. It wasn't uh, really good because my idea of exhibiting then is what a lot of people think is exhibiting today. Um, is that you take all your you decide on your topic subject. It does not uh, irrelevant. And you take them out of your album and you put them on an exhibit page and say, this is my exhibit. And that doesn't cut it. That doesn't cut it. Uh, because stamps by themselves are um, just only a part, a small part of the right. exhibit. Right. Small part of the exhibit. And so, you know, I learned a lot more and uh, slowly got into about 1998. I was first allowed to exhibit at an international level. And I exhibited it in um, in Israel. In the, um, I think it was fifty years of statehood. Yeah, fifty years of statehood then. And after that, I wanted to do a display out of the country, but um, I wasn't able to until about two thousand and four. So it's uh, since two thousand and four, I've been trying to actually um, get a decent uh, result internationally. It's a rough, uh, rough process. Mm. So what was it that put you over the top this time? Um, you made well, some minor changes or additions? Minor, minor, no. Minor, no, 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 major. <laughs> <laughs> now, the thing is like this. Um, when, we, when I got to, um, I explained to you about the, the exhibit levels, and I was basically at the 82, 83% um, point level, and I was going to give up because I was basically stagnant. And somebody came to me and said to me, why don't I rewrite the whole thing to take a, a, a writing a story? So I did that. And that was 2008. And that pushed me into the large for male level, which is very, very good. And I got stuck again. And about 2013, I was almost going to give up. And I had an idea of with my current concept. And I rewrote everything once again, totally different style. And I got my first gold for New York 2016. I actually got it in London 2015, which allowed me to go to New York. And I was very happy with that. Now, last year in Hungary, I got a gold medal with a special prize. Now, the special prize for treatment meant that I was almost in the large gold, but I had to rethink. The, the, as I told you before, people not only the judges, international judges are not only looking for stamps, they're looking for the unusual. Um, take a subject which no one thinks is part of your part of your, your subject matter and show them decent material. And I actually added four new pages to my entire exhibit. And for, for another thing that I did was I rewrote everything uh, using a different font, different color. And I think both of those together, introducing new ideas, take out weaker kind of pages, is what pushed me over the top. Mm -hmm. um, I can just give you an example of uh, one one page that I that I added, which I'm actually proud of, actually. <laughs> but um, do you have it on your computer right now to show? To uh, share? Yes, I have. But just before you do that, I want to tell you what my subject oh, okay. matter is. Oh, okay. I just, because I just... your your viewers or the people that we're going to show this to later don't know what I collect. And mm -hmm. my, my my subject, my theme is the Jewish homeland, our struggle for survival. Mm -hmm. Now, the Jewish people have been in, on, in the Holy Land for 4,000 years, 4,000 documented years. And it's also been a, a, a continuous existence. And now we have to contend ourselves with, we've had over the years to contend ourselves with various invaders. We had, we had the Romans, 
We had the, the Muslim invasions, we have the Crusaders and so on and so forth, the Ottomans, Byzantines, sorry, and the and in the British. And now we have, now we have, the, have the Arab-Israeli conflict. And it's been going on for 75 years. So my idea was uh, to say that even, even ancient enemies can become friends. Okay? Which is, if we, look at, if we look at the issue of uh, France and Britain, they were at loggerheads for centuries. And sorry, 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 let me, re let me reset it. France and Germany, mm. they've been bitter enemies for centuries. And today they're good buddies. They're part of the European, uh, European market and they're good buddies. The page that I added, if I can find it, um, if you find it, then I'll share it. Just give me a moment, guys. Uh, now, what you can see here is a page, and as, as I said before, that I want to show that um, Germany and France can be friends. Now, the first, the first item is a letter written by Napoleon's Grand Army uh, when he invaded, uh, when when Napoleon invaded uh, Prussia. So there we have the French invasion of Prussia, the first time. Yeah. The second item is where between the France and the Prussian War of 1870, where this is something called a Papillon de Metz. Now I have done a video of uh, Papillon de Metz. So any Papillon de Metz, any of your viewers who want to have a check out that uh, that uh, video can have a look at it. It's a very rare item. Um, as I said to you, there's less than 125 of these recorded. And the Papin de Metz is when, it was, when a, a town by the name of Metz was surrounded by uh, German soldiers, the German, the Prussian military. And the only way that the, the French could get out messages was using um, special balloons. And that's uh, the second time. Now, the, the bottom one, on the right-hand side, I'm talking about when World War II, when Germany invaded France, and they actually occupied France, yet uh, rela the relations between the two were suspended because of free postage. And the, the little stamp on the left there showed that France and Germany are today friends. So my point being that uh, even, even um, uh, Jews and Arabs can become friends. And we're actually seeing it uh, come, to, come to life, that simple, uh, simple issue of long-term long, long enemies can, be fr can become friends. We have what we call the Abrahamic Accords, and um, and the United Arab Emirates are great friends of ours now. They weren't always great friends of ours, but today they are. I actually have in my collection an item sent from um, from the Israel boycott office in Abu Dhabi, an official government office in 1974. Mm -hmm. And um, today we're good friends. I've got uh, some. I met in Germany this weekend or last weekend. I met some good friends of mine from the United Arab Emirates. So there is hope. <laughs> so that kind of item is what I added. Now to add the kind of like an item like that, I had to take out something else. And the question always is, what do I take out? Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> now when I say what I always take out, um, I know that in American, American exhibits, and I've heard it from a lot of people, is you can have 10 frame exhibits. In an in international arena, you, the maximum you can have is eight. So there's no such thing as a 10 frame exhibit. Mm -hmm. uh, and eight frame for me, because I use a special size, uh, special size page, it's basically only 96 pages. So when you take out, a, when you have to want to add in a certain page, you have to take out something else. So how many pages per frame? Um, I have is it 96? 12 pages. Oh. I have 12 pages per frame. Okay. Three per line. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot of material to fill up. <laughs> it mm. is, but don't forget, I've been collecting the subject since about 1982. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's a lot of material, but you all the time have to keep about keep thinking about what to do. Um, I, I can yeah, to exhibit is not the, not the easiest thing in the world. Um, I'm not going to put anybody uh, anybody off, but like, I've seen a lot of exhibits over the years. And to, if you if you if you have a connection, you obviously want to display it. You want to tell people about. It, you want to show people. That's part of my enjoyment anyway. And if you say collect dogs, 
And far too often we see an exhibit of dogs, which is basically a kind of template. Uh, what do I mean by template? You talk about the dog, the breeds of dog, um, the dogs on dogs in in the movies, dogs in art, uh, dogs in service to man. It's kind of like a template. You'll see the same thing. Right. It doesn't really matter if it's if it's the same thing with horses. You can have exactly the same thing for horses, for birds, or whatever, and that becomes boring. Yeah. So, for example, for example, in um, in Ebro, we had two dog exhibits, and the one is called "Dog Stories with Legends and Facts." Now, <laughs> as as a as a subject matter, that's interesting. You don't know what. Uh, what legends, what myths, or whatever. Um, a lot of people who exhibit do not talk about what a dog likes to eat. Um, famous dogs, the K, the the K nine K nine uh, units. A lot of things. Uh, do dogs used as training guides. As um, the people who train the training guy, the the training dogs. There's a lot of things that you could talk about when we talk about gods and uh, dogs. Another another exhibit that they had about gods was uh, dogs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they talk about that that uh, that uh, remark that I just made. Um, somebody once said that uh, dog is God spelt uh, the opposite way around because a god is mm -hmm. a dog is a reflection of God's love for you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> another nonsense, but anyway. <laughs> um, but he, this another person exhibited something like um, my best friend's dog. Now, if we talk about my best friend's dog, the field is open. I mean, you're talking about a specific dog, my best friend's dog. <laughs> so you're not going to have, you're not going to talk about all the breeds or whatever. It's, um, not I, too many stamps must... issued for the dog either. <laughs> yeah. Now, I must admit, I made a mistake that I didn't actually go and see those two exhibits. I didn't have time. I was too busy with other things. And I missed it. I missed out. It was mm -hmm. lovely. <laughs> Yeah. yeah so well then what's your your next step after you've reached the pinnacle and now you're retired or are you going to continue to improve i am going to try and continue to improve because when you reach this level uh, you can always drop um when you when you've got a law international goal three times in three consecutive years uh then the chance of you dropping are uh, zero but you can only exhibit afterwards in the in the champion class which mm -hmm. is basically there are not many mathematicians who've got the champion class i know of only one and um it's not easy and i'm not exactly aiming for that um so that's, that's, yeah. that's actually that's actually a lot of money a lot mm -hmm. of money it's not worth my while it's not going to do me anything are we talking like about the the world series of philately here no, that that's no? Low, that's a that's national exhibit. Yeah. Oh, okay. Don't forget the when you in Americans, it's like a world football series. It's only right. American. Yeah. It's only American. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. I, I and never the realized that. Valletta, yeah, the World Series of Latin is only American. Is the American series even, of... <laughs> yeah. I don't exactly think even Canadians join those. That's crazy. Are, I'm not sure about that. Uh, but the World Series is... National exhibit exhibition of America. Huh. Um, I'm outraged. <laughs> no, I don't, you know, it's like world world football, and it's uh, it's American only. Uh, but mm -hmm. um, so, what what is the uh, the the pinnacle of the you know the highest international uh, award someone can strive for? It's called the the Grand Prix of an of an exhibit. Mm -hmm. There's there's various exhib exhibits which are um, the the exhibits for example there was London 2015 there was New York 2016 um, there was a hiatus uh, for a few years because of Corona uh, this year it was um, Ebra last year it was also London um, where Boston 2026 is the one to look for next uh -huh. I'm hoping to exhibit in in Boston 2026 uh, if they'll invite me I'll be there. Oh, oh! It's by invite only. No, it's not. It's not. I was oh. making a, a sarcasm. 
Oh, <laughs> someone, has, someone has to pay for those expensive hotels in in America, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, um, uh, so I'm how, how does somebody to... nowadays, how a younger collector, how do they get? Uh, what should they think about if they if they're interested in exhibiting? Look, the whole thing is that um, I, I, America has different different rules and regulations, uh -huh. and um, there, the American rules and regulations are easier. Uh, they have something which doesn't exist anywhere else in the world, which is called a topic. I don't even know that a book was even written written by somebody, and I purchased it on Amazon, and I realized that there's a lot of things there that are not, not correct. Sure. They're basically only American. And you, there's a differentiation between topic and thematic and a theme. A theme is when you tell a story. Okay, we tell a story. And I gave an example of the dog. If you talk a dog and you talk about, you want to talk about a topic, you say, okay, I'm going to put all the stamps and all the, um, all the cancellations, all the meters referring to a dog. That's my topic. Mm -hmm. my, my dog, for example. But dog... Um, uh, the dog stories, uh, myths, and whatever, whatever the guy, the guy referred to, that's something more esoteric. So he can actually talk about whatever he wants to. He can talk about the Saint Bernard if he wants to. He can talk about um, dog heroes in the in the First World War. And I know there happened to be one. There was actually a dog, um, an American dog, who was awarded a, a medal in the in the First World War. Hmm. So he can talk about those kind of stories, which which put on a, a totally different spin. So if somebody wants to start out exhibiting, he has to find him for himself, um, shall we say it, a, a certain niche, a certain thing that puts him apart from the rest. the others, right. Yeah. yeah. So, and, uh, but he, he should start in the, on the, should start locally and be okay with himself and happy with himself locally. And only then if he uh, wants to look, at, uh, look out and look out of the country, only then start looking internationally. Mm. And international exhibiting can be a little bit cruel, you know. Um, yeah. I don't, I've been playing the game, you know. It's really, when you play internationally, it doesn't matter where you play. You have to abide by the rules. It reminds me of, um, reminds me of Nadia Comaneci in the 1980s mm. when she did that triple somersault backwards or whatever. Yeah. That was the <laughs> first time she did it. And it was nobody had ever done and nobody thought it can be done. And so quite often now it's expected. You know, so if you don't do that, you don't get the, don't get something. So, the, the, so when you go internationally, you have to go by that one. It's not if not for everybody, but on the other hand, when you do go internationally and you do go out to meet people, you find a lot of friends, a lot of places, a lot of new things, and of things you don't realize. A lot of things you you know you can say, you say things. A typical example that. Um, you know, Americans uh, Americans have something called an advertising cover, which isn't an advertising cover at all. It's basically a letter with an advert on it, but to call an advertising cover, it's not really, because in the international arena, an advertising cover is one in which you've got a lot of advertisements or even one, but it had an effect on the rate. In other words, the person who paid, who had the advert, paid some of their postal rate. For example, you can have a five cent um, um, item, a five cent postal rate, and we couldn't advert on it, uh, you only have to pay four cents for it because the one cent was paid for by the person who's advertising it. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's valid for use internationally. And there's a, a lot of things there, for example, about dogs. And uh, there's a lot of things that you don't see from Russia, you don't see from, from, uh, from Poland, or whatever, and there's a lot of material out there that people don't know about, and it's valid in exhibits, even American exhibits. And if you don't go to these American, American, um, um, so if you don't go to these international exhibits, you sometimes don't know what is really out there. And it's a great pity, because there are a lot of things that you can add. Uh, the American Topical Association will list the number of, um, of uh, the, the stamps, the, the, the stamps for the dogs, sorry, dogs for st dogs on stamps. Uh -huh. like, will they talk about the cancels? Will they tell them to talk about booklets? I um, mean, you have might have one on the cover of a booklet or postal mm -hmm. postal station, which is a totally different issue. There's a lot of things out there that uh, can can be added to something, but the, the idea is always learn, know your know your know your material. 
you do not want a judge to come up and say, have more knowledge than you do about your own your own material. Um, you know, some people are very lucky, unlucky when they dis, uh, when they exhibit something for it, like um, um, computers. Okay, and all of a sudden, one of the one of the judges is a computer fundi, and he'll say, "Well, sometimes that's not exactly correct." And that's when you have to be careful that you you have the knowledge and you display it correctly. And if I, if if someone new wants to come in, I would say to him, "Go via thematics," because when you talk about thematics, you don't have to spend a lot of money. If you go traditional. It doesn't matter whether you talk about the first issue of, of the Bavaria or whatever. You talk about a lot of money, a lot of money. And that puts off a lot of people, uh, a lot of people. Because why would somebody new want to start out by fork out money? And he's got a lot of money. But even then, why? Uh, you want to fork, collect the first issue of Jordan, for example. Um, you know what? Even the, the two the two cent uh, New Guinea uh, the item that's uh, stuck, in, uh, stuck in Stanley Givens, um, you want to start a collect an exhibit like that, you know that you can't get hold of one thing because mm -hmm. it's stuck in Stanley Gibbons. People will not start in there. But if you go to thematics, the world is uh, the world is open to you, and we'll welcome you with open arms. We want new exhibitors, we want new ideas. And so I would uh, say to somebody to start, but you have to know your material. You have to know it. You have it's to be the like, smartest uh, guy in the room for. <laughs> It's not a question of the smallest guy in the room. Yeah, exactly. On mm -hmm. your topic. And it can be something very, very minor, very, very minor, but you have to know what you're talking about and show it accordingly. And if, there are a lot of fantastic um, exhibits out there. Uh, I've seen an exhibit uh, called Night. Now, at night, you can do anything you want to. You can tell whatever story you want to. Um, you know, the noises at night. <laughs> and the creatures that come out at night, there's a whole other thing, darkness. Um, blind people live in darkness all the time. So you can even in, uh, implement that, whatever. And there's some lovely things you can do if you if you re do your research properly. And a lot of the fun is doing the research, which I, is something I like very, very much. Uh -huh. Now, you, are, you asked me what's the future for me, and I'm actually looking into single frames at the moment. Oh, yeah. Um, um, I've got one exhibit uh, that I'm working on now, which is um, the Jewish stereotype, but on postcards, which is giving me a lot of fun because um, oh, yeah. I, I'm, love, I'm loving doing the research. With postcards, it's not like philately. Uh, there's not a lot written, and to do the research is a lot more difficult. Mm -hmm. And I'm having a lot of fun with that. I'm thinking of taking part of my exhibit and also exhibiting as single frames, um, but I'm still looking at new ideas. I'm actually had a, I had one idea that um, um, maybe one of your viewers can help me. Um, I wanted to talk about uh, poker, and there's a there's a um, um, there's an American fancy cancel called the Poker Hand. So I'm looking for that one. I did approach one American dealer, but he never uh, never uh, replied to me. And my idea was like this: that uh, with the conflict, um, it's like poker. You so you you play the play game poker and and you lose and then you say double or nothing, and you lose again, and you say once you lose again you say no I want it all back. So I'm talking about a game of poker here to try and to try and implement it. The other things are not so not so difficult to add. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking for the poker hand fancy counter from 1855. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, California. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, hmm, very interesting. Okay, well, we're about running up against the time wall here. So I want to thank you for joining me. It's really, thank you very real, much for having me. Thank real you interesting, listeners. real informative. And uh, look forward to seeing what the future holds for you. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> All right. Okay, well, thanks for being here. And we'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, and I thank Lawrence for all those great tips and thank him for uh, joining me for that chat. And I hope you all enjoyed it too and got something out of it. So until next time, this is Ted the Talking Stamp Collector wishing you all happy stamping. <laughs>